blessing, a gift bestowed by God through His mercy. In our society, we do not realize that we are continuously showered with blessings. We tend to overlook them because we're so used to them. We should be thankful that we don't struggle on a daily basis for our basic needs while more than a billion people are starving. We are in a situation to give back, to show our gratitude for our blessings. With HCI's help, these individuals are continuing an initiative in India. So currently, SAVE is working on a water project and uh, our current village of interest is Mohanpura. It's located in Rajasthan, the state of Rajasthan, which is a desert state in India. And so we're trying to address this water problem because their water has a lot of fluoride in it. And we're trying to find a long-term sustainable solution to uh, address this water problem and help purify this water. So the people are severely affected by the water because it causes dental and skeletal fluorosis. So that's crippling of their bones and that's uh, discoloration of their teeth. And this also affects irrigation. So their agriculture is vastly affected because the food such as spinach and other produce has concentrations of fluoride in it. Uh, our expected outcomes from Mohanpura are to, it's probably like a three to five year period at this point that we're gonna remain involved with them and we're trying to not only distribute these individual um, household filtration units and to get the drinking water mitigated, we're also trying to address the unemployment. So we, we have certain targets that we've set with SARD, our implementing partner, and we have a certain uh, number of youths that we would like to see um, employed by the end of this year. And that's also part of our vision, to involve the community and get them involved in finding a solution to this problem and not just coming in from an international basis and implementing our own solution on them. But Otherwise that would not be sustainable. Exactly. It has to be owned by the community for it to be sustainable in the long term. So the ultimate solution is to replace the groundwater, it's to replace the source of the contaminations. And so at a local level here, we're just trying to advocate for the village and trying to raise awareness. And then any money we do raise, we send it over and we try to help out. But that being said, anytime we do act locally in terms of fundraising for an international project, we're also raising awareness for the water resource management issues in general. As, as Canadians even know that even though we think we have abundant water sources, everything is limited, everything is, is being affected by climate change. We hope that HCI can look into our project and also um, you know, help us and fund us in carrying out this long-term solution for this water problem because it's not just something that can be addressed and solved in a year or a couple of months, but maybe even funding us financially a bit and giving us even some advice because we know that HCI has its bases internationally and that they've also done similar projects, so giving us some input as to how we can address this problem, uh, that would help us get far. One thing that project. we really believe in is not duplicating efforts. So if yeah. we feel that there's a better agency out there that's doing the same thing, then it's better to get on board with them than then, it is to yeah, just go ahead and... Our own. Yeah. yeah, exactly. HCI does not only support international projects, it is also present in our community. It can facilitate an initiative like Sean's. Philosophically, uh, wanted to do something in the city, make a bit of a difference. Um, at this age level, as an educator, we know that uh, this is the time to kind of help the kids out. Start of something as small as uh, a small group of kids and one person at an outdoor basketball court. Yeah, so I'm just a teacher and I just kind of started doing it. I'm going put the club later, I guess. Neighborhood people think that these kids are 17 year olds. Well, but he's 15 and Shamar is 14. So my boss hired him as a YSP and now she can't wait for him to turn 16 so he can get hired. Well, it showed us a lot of things about, about how to become a better people in life. And then like some people, like other kids think that it's just a basketball, but then it's more than that. Like, like Adidas said, it's a brotherhood. And then us, we're always playing together, having fun, and uh, just doing everything together. Basically. Yeah, basically it taught me hard work, hard work basically, and friendship, and how to like, trust people, basically, because you play with them every day, like basically every day of the week, or five, six times a week, so you have to trust them one day or another. So yeah, it's taught me just respect and hard work. Um, so just this, this week I kind of finalized looking at the expenses, but I'll show that to you later so you guys have an idea of what it costs 
even do something pretty low key like we're doing it. You put more money into programs like this, and it's preventative. It's like preventative medicine. You're giving these kids uh, life skills they'll use for the rest of their life now, instead of whatever else's cost is going to be when they're in their twenties. Our main focus is not basketball. Like we had one kid. His marks were okay. It just started dropping. So as his mark was going down, we just made him stop playing basketball. He would come here, have a seat, he would do his homework, and then until practice over. So he would sit here for two hours, do homework. Once his homework is done, our practices are done, he gets to go home. But basically, education comes before basketball. So and that's not that, that's not the guy. That's not him. He's pretty good. He's a good kid. Through what program? Can HCI help you? Representative from HCI International. Like nice nice to have you. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, well, the Youth Action Program uh, within HCI Human Concern International is uh, it's pretty much just a program that allows youth to come to us with projects and um, tell us what they want to do locally or globally, and we get it done for them. That's more or less it. Uh, HCI can can do wonders for a program that's driven towards the community, driven towards the betterment of society. Um, it can help raise uh, fundraisers, or schedule fundraisers, and uh, organize meetings, and um, advertise your programs and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's really, it promotes a fun atmosphere in which we do good to the world. I mean, um, just locally, we've, I mean, we're scheduling coffee houses, concerts, and uh, Pretty much any charity organization is more than willing to um, help out with us because we get the job done. Well, just recently we did an emergency food aid supply in Darfur, a trauma center in Kashmir, and uh, we actually did an early childhood nutrition program in Palestine. Um, well, the great thing about ATI is that no project is too small or too big. I mean, it's small localities that build up the global development scale, right? Um, so if you want to start locally and then progress to globally, ATI will be there for you and um, they'll talk you through the steps and everything. These are a few of many who realize the potential of what they can accomplish. You have the opportunity to have a direct impact on another person's life and they can impact yours. You have the power, words, actions, intentions to change the world, to help people help themselves.